Ah, yeah. Like and subscribe my YouTube content, guys. Finger guns. I'm not at all awkward. Oh, and comment. That's the other one. Alrighty. Educational game of middle lane. Oh boy, oh boy. Let's do a little something. Sure excited How about this one. so good wearing glasses? How does he do it? All right, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pick Void Spirit because this is like this is like my go-to mid hero. Um, I feel like with a lot of mid heroes currently, you can just straight up first pick the mid heroes because mid heroes right now are just kind they're difficult to counter. Um, like Void or Spirit heroes in general, um, Queen of Pain, Puck, uh, Invoker to an extent. Um. I feel like I'm mi I'm missing a few heroes that are good this patch, but but mid heroes in general are just like pretty much just straight up pickable. Um, so in my personal opinion, using a later pick on mid heroes is kind of a waste because you should be trying to give your team uh, better matchups in side lanes. I feel like if your side lanes win in this patch, um, you're in a much better position going into the game. So if you can get to, if you can get yourself to like a confident spot that are like on mid heroes where you can just early pick your mid hero kind of like quinn does um or gunner both of those both of those players first pick their mid heroes like all the time in pubs um you're you're doing your team a great service because you're giving them the ability to counter pick side lanes and stuff uh obviously in lower mmr brackets you're not going to see as many can i have tangos please thank you um, you're not gonna see people abuse counter picking as much, but uh, it's still it's like it's a good habit to get into at least for this patch. There ha there ha have been patches where you want to use a later pick on mid because mid heroes uh, mid hero matchups are just like incredibly important and everything. Um, but I would say this patch is like a prime example of. You you can just straight up pick mid heroes. Oh, OD is another one. OD is a really good mid hero that you can just straight up pick, and it's good. Um, but typically, when you're playing mid, you you usually just want to go damage heavy, stat heavy uh, item builds. Um, assuming you get shared tangos, uh, an item build like this usually looks the best because you know I do sixty I do sixty six damage straight up, and then I do uh, seventy nine damage on uh, creep hits. So. Um, Last hitting is just pretty easy with builds like this. Um, whenever you do go a build like this, you pretty much all... I'm not going to say always. I feel like, again, I'm not a mid player, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. I'm sure you could talk to much better mid players than me who understand what they're talking about way more than I do. The last time I was competitively a mid player was like four years ago on... Archon Gaming for the Shanghai Major. Uh, maybe even longer than four years at this point. I don't even know. I'm so old, man. So, genuinely, th this is just my opinion on the mid lane. I'm sure other people have much better and more up-to-date opinions on the mid lane. But, uh, that, just a small disclaimer for you guys. But, uh... Yeah, usually in the mid lane, uh, when you go builds like this, you want to ferry out a salve like right away because um, if you don't ferry out a salve and you're trying to go for like this bottle rush or um, this bottle rush or you're trying to go for your, your null talisman first or something and you're ferrying out a null talisman and you get down to 300 HP and you actually can't enter the lane anymore because you're at 300 HP, um, you're already griefing your own game or your own lane. Uh, so you you want to be at full health as frequently as possible in the mid lane. That is why uh, when you watch competitive mid players, you'll see you'll see their team TPing middle to fill uh, fill up their bottle when they don't get the four minute uh, power rune. And you know, you'll see uh, competitive teams play in four minute power runes like so, so heavily and uh, just try and control the map. Or, 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 or control the mid lane just a shit ton for their mid player to just make them have that extra HP MP uh, advantage over the uh, the enemy mid. Um, so I I play Void Spirit differently from like Quinn. Quinn is a 
great Void Spirit. I highly suggest watching Quinn replays if you want to get good at Void Spirit for the mid lane. Um, I think Quinn usually go maxes W and E uh, because the farming potential for maxing W and E is... Uh, all right, we know he has a high ground ward mid. But such is life. Um... I in preparation. I don't I don't actually know what the best skill boat is. I'm assuming I'm assuming Quinn's probably right in maxing W and E, but uh I like going the early point in Q because uh it helps give uh kill potential. Enigma super. I, I I'm talking too much, I'm not even following the, the things that I'm saying. Um but I'm ferrying out a salve and a magic stick. Uh, when you're playing against Storm, Storm just spams Remnant so much. So you want a magic stick against this hero for sure early on. Uh, magic stick is just incredibly value. Um, Do you think I've not seen? I'm I'm considering my skill boat right now. Oh, Sorry, I I think I do actually want to go W E, just because it's gonna be rough as hell for me to lane here if I'm not constantly pushing out the lane. All right, so you know we're getting we're getting a decent amount of sp spells out of storm um, I'm not gonna upgrade my null talisman uh, Early on in this lane. I'm gonna go for uh, a quicker bottle bottle is just incredibly good for uh, Bottle is just incredibly good for um, Again, just having having the health and uh, mana advantage over the enemy. You are not okay. As you can see, he already got his bottle. So we're just kind of playing a bit defensively right now because he's pretty strong and we're not that strong. Uh, can I get help on four minute power runes? Never be afraid to ask your team for help, especially in power rune. So Storm doesn't have, like, we're, we're winning the advantage right now. Uh, Nice. Uh, of like health and mana against the storm. So that and our tusk was also there. I'm not gonna lie guys I didn't even know tusk was there like <laughs> What a great rotation by him. I was not looking at my mini map <laughs> But it all worked out we got the kill um, <laughs> So I, I'm gonna we have tusk on bottom rune, so I'm gonna run top rune because uh, we want to we, we, we just want the uh, We want to control both runes basically and if I run top rune when I already have a hero on bottom rune We are basically guaranteeing that we get one of the runes I reject you I thought go, you were. Go, 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 go. I okay. You guys are insanely indecisive. <sighs> it was always so. My bad. My bad. No mana. Take runes. All right. So we have bounty runes coming up. So I'm gonna run over, get a bounty rune. Um, honestly, I also see a lot of mid players just not even finish the Null Talisman. Um, I'm just getting boots first. I probably still will finish the Null Talisman for the extra item slot. 
Um, also, sorry I'm not talking as much through the laning stage. It's just mid takes a lot more focus for me than off lane because I am not in my comfort zone. We can we can kill this guy. Nice. Nice, nice. Good job, guys. And as you can see, one simple communication gets the enemy mid hero killed. Power and power and power and bottom tusk. But yeah, communicating with your team as a as a mid player is just like super important. Um just saying simple things like I think this guy is killable and stuff will get such a positive reaction out of your team uh, Like all the time and I, I mean Yeah, I, oh, literally all the time um, I honestly think one of the biggest issues of mid players is that they do not communicate what they want or how they want it or you know stuff like that as you as you saw this game i communicated two crucial things i communicated power runes at four four and six minutes and i communicated when i thought we could kill the enemy team when i hit level six and he was not yet level six yet um so when i hit when i hit level seven i put a point in aether remnant because i want to move around the map now uh so i'm gonna run bottom this guy is actually just already dead I'm gonna just run back mid. Nice, boys. bug it. Let's go solo kill the AA. I get the word, okay. Unless they have a power or, or a, a ward. I think they have a ward. They definitely have a ward. AA would not have ran like that if he, they didn't have a ward. So you know, I'm gonna be a great mid player and I'm gonna buy my own sentry. I really hope the ward's there because if it's not, I'm gonna look like a goober. And I hate looking like a goober. Uh, help, help. Norm died again. I'll top, I'll top, no. I'll top. Well, we'll see, we'll see if I'm right on this. We'll see if I'm right on this. I hope I'm right on this. Go defense top, guys, or no? Oh, thank goodness! Okay. Monkeys forever, you're the greatest! Thanks, guys, I know. Sometimes. So I'm just gonna kill this camp and uh, camp the bottom power rune, hoping it's here. Oh my goodness, it's here. Am I? Should I just move back to mid? I've guessed like every power rune. Um. All right. So I got my phase boots. I have uh, my null talisman coming. But uh, just to clarify, why I knew there was a ward there. Um. Uh, basically when we were hasting towards middle the AA backed off as soon as we came into came into vision of this cliff So uh, yeah, yeah, we can go we can go The AA backed off as soon as we came into vision of that cliff, so we can only assume that there's a ward right there Wow he disappeared I didn't know this was a magic show I reach from the um seems you don't understand. A moment denied. Oblivion pulse. You have the time to do In preparation. Hello, take save, take save. When you're using uh whatchamacallit? I want the hidden. Um when you're using bottle charges and stuff, you can uh, put you know, cycle your sat items through your backpack to get uh, more efficient um, HP and mana regen out of your bottle charges. Something you'll see like every high MMR player do when they um, uh, let my let me thumb please. I need thumb when they are bottling. So, farm jungle, bro. Farm jungle. All right, so we have 10 minute bounties and power rooms coming up. We're gonna play on them again. I guess it again. They call me Quinn Callahan. 
I'm just too good. I've gotten like every power rune. This is like a perfect mid game. Um. All right. So I am I am kind of looking bottom for this 10 minute siege, but because I have a haste rune, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold mid and uh, try and defend or de push middle because their 10 minute siege is mid and our mid tower. Or I mean again. As always, I will continuously reiterate this. The middle tower is the most important tower in the game. Safe lane tower is the second most important tower, but safe lane towers die all the time because teams continuously, or players continuously make efforts to push safe lane towers, and it's really hard to defend safe lane towers unless you're willing to bring a shit ton of heroes. Um, so we got middle push out. I'm gonna haste towards bottom. It's probably a bit late. I'm I'm hasting towards bottom, bro. Come on, come on. Enigma old. Good job. I must forget. All right, everything going according to plan, kind of. Uh, oh yeah, did everything I said I was gonna do. Defended mid, ran bottom, killed them, took the tower. Hooray, hooray. I love it when things pan out the way I say they're going to. Um, the natural course. So I'm just gonna kind of exist bottom until my troll wants to come down here. We just saw an arcane rune top, so Storm has an arcane rune. That is uh kind of bad, but we have a Yule, so if we if we end up seeing the storm, ooh, we want that as well. The storm is rushing orc at this game, so I am real happy that uh, we have our Yules first. Um, the reason you want to go Yules first a lot on Void Spirit is because of uh, is because Yules can set up your Aether Remnant. It gives you more survivability. It gives you mana regen. It gives you damage. I, I mean, Yules is just such a good item. Yules is. I've been convinced that Yules is the most broken item in the game for a while i genuinely believe this item is just insane and also now it upgrades into wind waker for the late game um there are just so many heroes in the game that benefit off of yules uh because it gives you a setup it gives you a tp cancel it's just it's just a great item um but also it's good that we're going Yules this game. I, I mean, I personally, I think Yules is such a core item on Void Spirit. I know, I know I really don't like speaking in definites, but uh, I think Yules is such a core item on Void Spirit that, uh, oh, I'm dead. Maybe not, unless, get this goober out of here. Ah! Okay, I'm dead. But, um, I know I don't like speaking in definites, but, or absolutes, but, uh, Yules on Void Spirit, I pretty much go this item every single game. There have been cases where I end up going, like, Ags first because we just absolutely need the team fight, or, uh, or, you know, whatever, but, um... But, um... That was such a bad joke. <laughs> Your but yeah, I, I pretty much go yours like every single game on Voice Trade. It's just that good. Um, and then I usually go Ags afterwards. Uh, there are scenarios where I think you can go BKB next uh, after the Yules because uh, BKB is also just really good on Void Spirit. It allows you to it allows you to go in front line a lot more. Um, and just be a nuisance to the en enemy team. I'm gonna see if I can just solo kill AA. Because why not?
Well, that's why not, because there's a storm waiting for me. Storm just respawned and came mid. I don't know. I'm being bad right now. Sometimes you just gotta be psycho. And that's me, like, 70% of the time. Uh... Yeah, now I guess we just wait to respawn again. Uh, I'm gonna buy the Ogre Axe first, um, because again, I might want to go BKB first this game. They have, uh, they have Mars and, uh, Storm Spirit, and BKB is really, really good against both of those heroes. Um, especially if the Mars goes Yules first, because, uh, he will use, um... Okay, okay, choose for me. He will use, uh, go use Yule to like, insta- I'll, I'll come for the haste if it- oh, never mind. Stormhave, Malevolence. Go, let's go, let's go. Good job, good beautiful, job, good beautiful, job, good job. beautiful. Nice, um, nice, good the job. reason I went bottom is just because there's a shit ton of farm. Uh, Honestly, I probably should have been playing with my team for that play, but uh, after after my little little dive middle where I fed, I uh, I kind of wanted to catch up a little bit and make my game. I mean, okay, catch up is the wrong word because I'm still obvious. I still have a great game. Don't get me wrong, but I wanted to I wanted to calm myself down mentally because I uh, I was making a couple. Risky plays that uh, we're not really panning out. But our team owned when I was just kind of chilling out. So, you know, you love to see it. Um. I'm not ready. Your top tower no. is under attack. Yes. Oh, what an arrow. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so at this point in the game, it is kind of our job to be running around with our team and uh, making them feel... making them feel strong with our strength. Um, Another common mistake I see a lot of mids do is they kind of they oh god Well, I'm dead. There's I'm dead. I want all right. I wanted to walk into their tri camp. I honestly just subconsciously assumed my team would follow me that's my fault i should have asked them to come to the tri camp with me because we basically are we're at a point that we were so strong that if we walked here together we were able to take this area of the map low mana, um, low mana, storm low mana. It, it is my fault don't get me wrong that death uh because i did not i did not tell my team what i wanted from them which i like here's the issue with being a competitive player I just assume my team is gonna do like the proper thing and like do the thing that I'm thinking like they're innately I just assume they're gonna do that and they're not gonna do that like the int they're never gonna do that honestly um but yeah, so basically what I'm saying is communication is key. Use communication. Nice. Because if my Tusk followed me up here, if my Brewmaster followed me up here, we wouldn't have died. Like, I, I promise you guys, we wouldn't have died. Low mana. Nice, 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 nice. Rush, 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 rush. 
Um. Walk the mortal way. Leave the bounty, leave the bounty, leave the bounty, leave the bounty. Fuck! Sorry, sorry, bro. It's all good, man. I get the lemur, okay? Get the lemur. Holy perra. Uh, but yeah, basically, right after Roche, we, uh, the reason that I was so confident in aggressing on them there is because the storm was still dead, and even if they had all four of their other heroes there, there's no way that they're going to be able to fight us uh, after this Roche kill. Like, it, it'll take the storm way too long to get here, so as soon as the Monkey King casted his stun, we know exactly where Monkey King is, so if we cancel his Primal Spring then he's not able to do anything. Um, I don't. They prompted me. The void pad proceeds. Your bottom tower is He's not able to do anything right after he respawns, so we we know that we're able to aggress on the enemy team um, when the storm's dead. Uh, I'm not talking about my map movements very well this game, because it is difficult playing mid. I swear, playing mid is so much more stressful than playing other roles in Dota. Anyways, back to the game. Um... I, I, I am, I, I'm obviously kidding. Dota in general is just stressful, but like, the reason I find mid so stressful is because it's not my main role. So when I'm trying to explain my thoughts in addition to playing not my main role, it can get a bit hectic in my head. So it's just, whatever. I'm just rambling now. Anyways, playing power runes at, at uh, 22 minutes. And, the, I mean, the reason that I'm not really explaining everything as in-depth is because I just kind of assume that, like, um... I just kind of assume that you guys understand that, like, I'm just do I'm just rinse and repeating the same shit. Like... Uh, like I, I'm, I'm getting the power runes and the bounty runes at every minute mark. I'm trying to aggress onto the enemy side of the map whenever possible because when you play on the enemy side of the map rather than your side of the map, you're you're choking out the enemy team. And as the as the mid hero, you you usually control the pace of the game much more. So if you AFK farm on a mid hero, you're you're hindering your team's. Uh, you're hindering your team's ability to like play more aggressive, and um, I, I was silenced, man. I'm I'm orchid. I can't do anything. But um, um, Vladimir or or Agon, like Vladimir troll. Your top tower is under attack. Yeah, if you're if you're like AFK farming as a mid hero, you're you're hindering your team's ability to like be more aggressive and and you know get out on the map and close out the map. So like if I'm if I'm playing back here or back here or like you know if I'm going up here, I'm hurting I'm hurting my team's ability to be able to uh, aggress on the map and accomplish the things that they want to accomplish. Um, so like. What I'm trying to say is that I'm just my mentality this game is how how can I help enable my team to get on the enemy side of the map to make them feel uncomfortable. That's just like I, I am repeating that question in my head over and over and over. Um, and as as a spirit hero, it's a lot easier to do stuff like that because we, we're so hyper mobile. We have we have two astral steps. We have uh, dissimulate. We have so. We have such a huge arsenal to work with. Um, I 
I want the hidden path. I take storm, probably. Storm might so be. Oh my goodness, really? I encompass all. Radiance has been killed. All right, that was just. What? All right, well, I wasted my 10 second DKB. I don't want to talk about it, guys. I'm just, um, <sighs> all I can do is sigh. All I can do is sigh. Um, but yeah, basically at this point, we're just, we're just sitting behind troll. We're watching our big boy hit some towers. Apparently he's afraid. Guess we're backing off. I'm chill with that. We can just play next to Roshan, get an Aegis, and try and high ground from there. Uh, I do think high ground is one of like the biggest baits in Dota right now because um, there are just so many ways that you can that you can turtle uh, high ground right now, and there's so many heroes that are good at turtling, um, like Enigma, for example, Mars, these heroes that can just spam out waves, Storm is, I, I don't know why I didn't mention Storm first, Storm can literally just zip out a base constantly, cutting creep waves, and just doing a shit ton of damage to the enemy team, um, but, guy here, guy here, Basically, the only time that you should go high ground is if you're like 100% confident that you're gonna be able to... You're gonna be able to like end the game with high grounding. Um, which, you know, now that, you know, like, for example, we just killed the enemy carry. So we feel a lot stronger now because it's 5v4. Realistically, we could walk high ground and try and pressure the tower. Um, in a theoretical right, scenario, if Monkey King buys back, then we know the enemy team is five heroes strong again. We're in their base, etc. We need to back back out as quickly as possible if the Monkey King buys back. If the Monkey King doesn't buy back, then we probably get a free set of racks because we know he's dead. Um, so, you know, you can do plays like you walk to the high ground to with the intention of forcing this Monkey King to buy back. And as a team, you're like, hey, we're going to get out as soon as this Monkey King buys back because that in itself is an objective. Because then if the Monkey King dies again, he doesn't have buyback and you just win the game off the next Monkey King death. Um, you know, you, you can also do stuff like that. You walk high ground, force enemy team to fortify, and just walk away. Uh, there, there's so many, like, minor things in Dota that are, uh... So many minor things in Dota that are considered an objective that, uh, but like that that's a perfect example. Like we we walked high ground as the Monkey King's coming up. We're not going to be able to fight them. I mean, Enigma used BKB Black Hole. Like they're just going to get free kills in the game with BKB Black Hole. But no, no BKB. I I just want to kill this Monkey King again. He's tilted or something. No. Um, your bottom tower is I had no reason to notice you. I don't really want to TP back. Someone else can do that if they want. That ain't me, though, Chief. Vice Peer, you, you get Abyssal for Enigma? Sure, man. I'll get Abyssal for Enigma. Got it. Why not? I honestly didn't really have anything else that I really wanted to buy, anyways. So why not buy Abyssal for the Enigma? No longer you feel me, chat? When the time is right. Um... Honestly, though, there are a lot of items you can go on Void Spirit at this stage in the game. Um, you know, you can go, like, Crit Sick, you can go, um... Uh, you get items like AC, Shivas, you can get uh, Octarine if you want the extra cast range and cooldown reduction. You can get Bloodstone if you want the spell uh, spell lifesteal to be more tanky. Um, I mean, 
yeah, they, there's just a ton of items you can go on Void Spirit. Uh, all situational, all good in different different scenarios. Um, when it, whenever you'll hear hear me talk about items, like uh, Dota, Dota is such a situational game, and you really should never bait yourself into thinking like very linearly and just you know. Do you think I've not? You should never be tunnel visioned on like one item build or like one thing being the, the correct thing um i mean like for example when you see me play fury on you will see me do like the first two items like every single game but that's just because half the time in pubs i just don't feel like thinking about my items i feel like turning my brain off when i play pubs half the time and just you know doing my own thing which isn't isn't really the best way to play dota but you know i've been playing this game for 17 years so i i just i get tired of it all <laughs> sometimes but um yeah you, you you should you should always you should always be thinking about why you are purchasing items and like what items are actually going to help you in the game and just uh what items like will be good or like will help your team the most or help you the most um i i the, the the reason i think those two are different is because there are games that like you just you you just have to straight up play for yourself um and like you know you have to buy an item that may may not be the best for your team but like it makes you more survivable and it makes you stronger um and then there's other games where your team just straight up needs you to buy a pipe. And if you buy a pipe, you know you're going to win the game because you bought the pipe. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm assuming the boys are going to win this one. Win this one for me. This Mars is a tanky, a tanky boy. Nice guys, good job. Go team! Good job. GG boys. Safe from Brazil, monkeys forever. Save from Brazil. <laughs> great game, boys. Great game. Nice game, boys. Nice game. Um. But yeah, we just bought back there because our troll had Aegis Cheese. We knew he was going to get all of his shit off. So if we immediately bought back, we were able to get back into the fight. Us getting caught by the uh, by the black hole was really bad in the first place, but you know, we managed to make it work. We got ourselves into an acceptable position. Command the team for a job well done.